This is medieval Total War. Dude, look at the design. Dude, look at the design of this game. Doesn't this layout just scream early 2000s? I mean, just look at it. It looks so cheap. It looks so corny, but it looks so good. Dude, it has Gregorian chant. Can you hear that beautiful music? It sounds so beautiful. There's something about these old games. It has an aesthetic to it. It's so awesome. I'm gonna show you guys this game. Dude, listen to this. Doesn't that music just rock? Oh my god, that's good music. They're moving. I can see them on the map. Yeah, it's a very nice atmosphere. Oh, there they are. Is that them? We're hitting them. Oh my god, there's so many of them. Guys. Full attack. Hit him, hit him, hit him, hit him. Hit these bastards. Kill them. What more of these assholes do we have to kill? Anyone else? We're taking this island. We're taking this island. You ain't gonna run. You ain't gonna run. We are take. Oh shit. You got a whole force of them here. What do you- The enemy flees the battle! This? Run down those worthless yes. peasants! That's By the it. Lord above, our foe has been much humbled. Let all- Guys. This game, Medieval 2 Total War. This game came out in 2006. I'm like, where the hell have you been my entire life? I, listen, I've been playing console games my whole life. I, I, have, I had the N64. I played uh, uh, Mario Kart, Super Smash Brothers. Uh, I played um, World Is Not Enough, uh, uh, Mario Tennis. And then when I got when I got the GameCube, you know, I was all about Metroid Prime, Resident Evil Four, Freedom Fighter. What else did I play? I mean, I got this Rainbow Six, whatever. I, I got the 360. You know, played Halo, and I played all this other stuff. And then I got the uh, the Xbox One. And then I played, you know, Red Dead Redemption, a lot of other games. Played all the different Resident Evil games. You know, I'm playing Modern, Modern Warfare and all this other stuff. And I'm like, man, these games are so good, cool. And then I look at these MMO games, right? Like World of Warcraft. And I'm thinking, man, them games look hella boring, right? And then I see these nerds on the internet and they're crying about how, oh, games, gaming is not the same as it used to be. Games today suck, blah, blah, blah. Nothing can beat the games from the early 2000s. And then I started playing Total War, Medieval 2. I got the game, right? And I started playing it. I was playing it. I started playing it at like 5 a.m. Dude, I was playing it until 9 a.m. This game is so awesome. I can, in this game, guys, in this game, I can start my own empire. I can start my own empire. I pick the, so they, they, they allow you to pick different empires, right? So you can pick the English empire, England, Spain, France, Byzantine empire. I straight up, I picked the smallest empire ever. I picked Venice. I picked the Venetian uh, government. The Republic of Venice. And man, I'm taking territory. Byzantium has declared war on me. Holy Roman Empire declared war on me. I, dude, I, I declared war on the Holy Roman Empire. Even after making an alliance with the Holy Roman Empire, I decided to just attack a, uh, a military base for the Holy Roman Empire, and I lost. The Byzantine Empire, for some strange reason, decided to declare war on me. I have no idea. I didn't do nothing to the Byzantine Empire. So I had a battle, open field battle, with the Byz but the Byzantines defeated the Byzantines, decided to invade Egypt, got into a number of naval battles, all of which, for the exception of one, I lost. Then the Byzantine Empire decided to make a treaty with me, which I agreed to because I couldn't get any damn boats around anywhere. They wouldn't let me get my ships anywhere. They were constantly attacking my ships, these damn Greeks. I agreed to the terms, and Byz Byzantium said, we'll make a peace deal with you as long as, we, as long as you give us full control over your island. I had to agree. I had, no, I had literally no choice. Byzantium was crushing me every naval battle they were destroying me they were just utterly wiping me out 
And so I was like, okay, I got to do something, right? So Byzantium says, okay, here's our terms. We control your island, the island of uh, Kerandion or whatever it's called. I said, okay, fine. Here's the island. They put all their troops on the island. It made me think about real politics. It made me think, I'm like, man, this is how real politics works. Because if I can't get my ships around, I can't make money for my republic. If I don't make any money for my republic, people starve. People starve. People, my, my city will be invaded, will be enslaved, will be killed. I have no choice but to make terms, to make concessions with someone who's stronger than me. And that made me think about Nagorno-Karabakh. Armenia lost the war against Turkey. Oh, it was Azerbaijan, but Turkey's proxy is Azerbaijan. And Nicole Pashinian just said, take take it. It belongs to Azerbaijan. Just, just go ahead and take it. And all them Armenians were pissed off. They were up in arms about this. And they were saying, oh my God, Pashinian, you damn traitor, you traitorous bastard. You gave away Nagorno-Karabakh, and they're hating on Pashinian. And I'm thinking, hot damn, I'm playing a video game, and I'm already giving up. I'm already I'm already ceding territory to Byzantium. And I'm pretty certain if I was a real-life emperor, and I gave away an island to, to the Byzantine Empire, there would be people rioting about me, saying, this bastard traitor, he gave away Kidong Dalion, or whatever the name of the island is. And I'm just like, guys, I had no choice. If I don't give away this island, Byzantium is not gonna let uh, is not gonna let me get my ships through. I can't do commerce. You guys starve. So I'm thinking that's why Nicole Pashinian gave up Nagorno Karabakh because them Turks told them, listen, if you don't give us Nagorno Karabakh, you're gonna end up on a skewer. You're gonna become a kebab. That video game, Total War. It teaches you more about politics than any book I've ever read. It does. It teaches you about politics. I mean, that game is just, it's a fun way to learn about politics, geopolitics. The Pope sent me a letter. I attacked the Holy Roman Empire. Why? For fun. I found a, 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 a base, or a Holy Roman Empire base, with only about 42 soldiers. I hit it with like 300 soldiers. Problem is, I forgot to bring catapults, so I couldn't even penetrate the walls. The Germans, the Austrians, they just stayed in their base. They didn't even do anything because they didn't have to. The Pope sent me a letter and the Pope is like, hey, you better make peace with the Holy Roman Empire because if you don't, I'm going to excommunicate you. And if I excommunicate you, your people can revolt and then you're not going to get anywhere. You ain't going to get a damn thing. You ain't going to get no money. You ain't going to get nothing. So I got the letter from the Pope and I was like, screw you. And then I heard, wait a second. If I get excommunicated, my people can revolt against me. Oh, damn. I better be nice. So I sent a, an emissary to the Holy Roman Empire. We made a ceasefire. We did a ceasefire agreement. We agreed to renew our friendship. Then the Pope sent me a letter and said, thank you so much for making peace with your fellow Catholic. I had no choice. This is how politics works. And politics has never changed. Strategy has never changed. It's all been the same. So when you see a politician and he's ceding something or he's giving up on something, a lot of people go, oh, sell out. If you were in his situation, you would do the same thing because there are forces at work in politics that you don't see. There's threats being made, there's espionage being done, there are assassins, it's all sorts of stuff that's going on in politics. Proxy wars, I mean, all sorts of stuff. So this game is awesome. For some reason, Byzantium, after making a peace deal with me, and after I gave them the damn island, okay, here's the island, leave me alone, let my ships pass, Byzantium decided to break the alliance. Byzantium decided to break the treaty with me. I have no idea why. And the Holy Roman Empire, for some reason, got upset with me after I invaded Cairo. And maybe it had, oh, I think I know why. See, I was wondering why did the, because I made peace with the Holy Roman Empire, made peace with the Habsburgs, whatever they were called. Then they then they broke the, the Holy Roman Empire decided to decided to uh, renew their animosity towards me. And I was wondering why, because it seemed out of nowhere, but I think I know why. I invaded Cairo without the Pope's blessing. After invading Cairo, I made a peace agreement with the Egyptians. And then the Pope wrote a letter, or I got, a, uh, I got, a, I got an announcement that because I invaded Cairo, the Pope pulled out his crusading forces from Cairo, essentially saying, how dare you do a crusade without the blessing of the Vatican? And then after I invaded Cairo and I got that announcement, Holy Roman Empire declares war on me. So I don't know what I'm gonna do. I might have to fight a war on two fronts. 
because now I got the Byzantines to deal with and I got the Holy Roman Empire and they're pissed off at me and I'm just poor little Venice. I'm just trying to make some money. You know, the Ottoman Empire approached me and they're like, hey, you want to make a deal? And I said, uh, yeah, sure. So I'm thinking, oh my goodness, here I am making a trade deal with the Ottomans. Why, why, what's going on? Why am I doing this? Well, because you have to, you got to make money. Wait, I can make deals with whoever I want? Yeah. I can declare war to whoever I want to declare war? Yep. I can make diplomatic relations with people? Yep. I can break diplomatic relations? Yep. I can make alliances? Yep. I can break those alliances? Yep. I can make peace deals with people? Yep. I can make trade deals? Yep. I can send ships and make money? Yep. I can send merchants and make money? Yes. I can invade Africa? Yes. I can invade England? Yes. You can do it. You got to build your empire. You're going to have consequences for your decisions, but those are all your decisions. And I can kind of guide this story to where I want to guide it. Yep. You can make your own damn story. I can vote for the Pope? Yep. I can vote for a cardinal? Yep. I can vote for... I can I can arrange marriages? Yeah. Oh, I can... Wh what else can I do? Like You can do anything that is involved in empire building. Now that shit is fun. And the music in the game is so relaxing. Dude, playing this game, it's like it's like it's like mesmerizing yourself. You're enchanting yourself playing this game. It's mind control this game. I'm playing the game and they got this like baroque music playing in the back. I'm it's just like this game's a masterpiece. This this is a masterpiece of a game. This is the great, I've played, I've played Red Dead Redemption 1 and 2, I've played Metroid Prime, I've played all the Resident, almost all the Resident Evils. I played, uh, you know, a lot of the war, the, the modern warfare games, uh, Battlefield, I played, I played a lot of games. I have never in my life played a game as addictive as Total War. Total War, Medieval 2. Total War came out in 2006 and people are still playing it. That game is damn good.